wow, this, this is a, a great event. Uh, I thank everyone for coming. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors on behalf of, on behalf of SUSE. Um, without you, uh, events like this wouldn't be possible. Uh, you, you really set the example for what, uh, what we would like with an open source. You know, you, by you sponsoring it, these events, you, you are telling the future generations that, that FOSS is important. So uh, today I am going to, well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm, I'm Douglas DeMaio. I work uh, with OpenSUSE. I do marketing, PR, uh, strategy, amongst many other things. Uh, and this past year I also helped organize the uh, OpenSUSE conference in Nuremberg. Um, <clears throat> so my first my first computer was a, a Commodore, <laughs> Commodore 64. I, was, I went to the library. That shows you a little bit about how old that I am as well, right? Um, <laughs> so there we go. So, so speaking of age, um, this year it is the 25th anniversary of Linux, right? And, uh, and SUSE is not that far behind. And, you see some of my, my colleagues here, they're pointing at someone. This person right there uh, works within SUSE. <laughs> and uh, yes, SUSE is going to be turning 25 in the coming months. And, and this past year, we celebrated uh, Open SUSE's 20, or 10th, 10th year anniversary. Right? So uh, going from then till now, uh, I would like to think that we have blossomed a little bit. You know, we are much more a vibrant community. We're a much more uh, vibrant movement, so to speak. Um, and we each complement one another. And in many ways, we're we're kind of like a, a coral reef, right? And and all the fishes, uh, yeah, they somehow depend on one another, right? So. Uh, what makes that work? Well, it's communities. It's, it's communities like uh, OpenSUSE Asia community. It's communities like the Indonesian OpenSUSE community. And then we get into Jakarta, the same idea. It's, it's very, this is a very strong community. It's like, I mean, very, very strong. So uh, it's something we like to see. And, uh, and we're thankful that you are all participating, and we ask that you would uh, contribute, continue to contribute, and, and tell people about OpenSUSE and about free software. So, um, again, it starts with with our communities, and we have the uh, Asia community for OpenSUSE. This is the third year that we're having the OpenSUSE Asia Summit. Um, and then we also have Europe. So this is where we, we host the OpenSUSE conference. And, you know, we, we are growing. We are 10 years old. Uh, so we just had our, our, I guess it was our, it wasn't our 10th OpenSUSE conference, but, but uh, we just had, I think it was probably like the 7th seventh, seventh OpenSUSE conference. Um, and so we're growing. We're growing in different communities. We're growing in different regions, in different states, in different countries, cities. And so one of those is, is North America. And in North America, we have, um, we have a big community in Los Angeles, which is where I grew up. Um, and we also have a very growing community in, in Mexico. And in Mexico, a, a big credit to that is uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Aaron Luna. And Aaron uh, is a professor at the university, at, in, at a university, and he goes to the various uh, open source conferences that they have, and he educates and teaches some of the younger generations about OpenSUSE. And, and much like Edwin, um, which many of you probably know, the older guy, um, <laughs> teaches, teaches the younger guy. And, and, and that's, that's how it works, right? That's you know, you you teach someone, and then they teach you know more people, and, and that's how we grow a community. And so, 
many of you that are in the audience, audience I would uh, encourage you to go out and teach some of the other students and some of the younger uh, kids um, open source software and how they can contribute to it. So South America is also a growing, growing region for us. Uh, we have a big community in Brazil and every year we have about, I guess it's a few hundred uh, that participate in, in an event in Sao Paulo. And then there's Africa. So Africa right now, we, we, don't, have, we don't have any events there, um, but we do have one person, one, one older person, Benito. And Benito is from Algeria. And the idea that he approached me with a few months ago is that we would uh, look at having a, a summit in Algeria. And, and, you know, we are here to, to, as a project, to empower. We're here to empower people to create a bigger community in their community, right? So, I'm going to get a drink while you read this real quick. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> open source software empowers people. It empowers people to do amazing things. Some things that we might not even have dreamt of, right? Um, landing something on the comments, exploring the world beyond ours. People can use software to help people. They can use, they can start projects um, that can really change people's lives. I was in uh, Berlin a couple <laughs> weeks back and there was a man in a wheelchair there. And I see, I've seen him around at a couple conferences before. And he found something very passionate to talk about, and that was he's in a wheelchair, and there are wheelchair access points that are, that are very difficult for, for people to navigate that are in a wheelchair. Um, they might not have uh, a ramp that will allow them to go into a certain area. And so he and a few other people in Berlin decided, well, let's make, let's make some sort of application out of this so that we can inform people um, what is, uh, you know, what works, what is, uh, what is available that can be, um, oh, what's the word? can't think of a word, but um, it would just, it would inform people that are, that do struggle with uh, trying to gain access because they're disabled. Um, it would inform them that where they can and cannot go. And sometimes you'll have situations where you have an elevator that's broken. That might also cause a problem for someone that is expected to go into a building and be able to have access to that building. Well, um, they've found solutions, and they've found solutions by working with the government. And their project has grown beyond Berlin and has gone into other countries, including the US. Right. And so open source software, you know, the open source street map uh, has allowed people to, to navigate and get around a lot easier, right? And that, uh, well, sorry, I didn't have my notes to read from, but um, I was going to go into the fact that, you know, the technology is being used in, in, in vehicles, it's being used uh, in in um, automated cars, things of that nature. And so there's a lot of job opportunities out there um, with open source software. And I just want to point out that SUSE has 95 jobs that are available right now, right? So it's, it's, it, there, are, there are a lot of opportunities in open source software. And if you're looking for a job, you're in the right place, right? Again, the car, right? This is this is going to change things. Um, 
And so these are the tools that we can see uh, people using to create something they're passionate about, right? So we have uh, the open build service. We have Leap, which is much more stable. Tumbleweed, which is our rolling release. So you're getting the latest libraries, the latest packages, and that's there's a benefit to that, right? And you have OpenQA. Uh, some of you were in our workshop yesterday that discussed OpenQA, and it basically uh, is, is quality test for your for your software. And other projects are starting to catch on using it, like Fedora, Gnome, for example. Last week I was in Portland for a conference, and they are looking at using it to pipeline their tests so that they feed into OpenSUSE or into other distributions. Uh, to allow those distributions to understand what's important to them, right? Um, OSEM is a uh, event manager, and so that can be used for you if you want to uh, create local events, you know, participate in in this project and and help, you know, help to um, organize your own open source software conferences and summits. So, um, I, I'm just showing this because I really like it. <laughs> this, this is great. Um, but, but the point being here is um, a lot of the things I think that we, uh, a lot of the limitations we have are really, really self-imposed, right? So if you can think it, you can do it, right? And that kind of leads me into the next uh, the next section or the next topic, and that is education, education and opportunity, right? So if you can think it, you can do it. Well, how do we learn to think, right? We have our, our parents, our mentors, our teachers, and our teachers we spend a lot of time with. So this is a this is a picture from from the area here, um, and this is a project that uh, that was started with uh, open source software in the schools. And what I see here is I see a lot I see a lot of things taking place, and I see focus. And that focus is intense focus. They are really, really aware of what's going on. They're, they're really zoned and trying to figure out a problem. I do see fun in that picture. Now, it is, it is uh, they're, they're, I'm sure as computer developers, you all understand the frustration, right? And, 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 but that frustration really is, uh, is trying to solve a problem. Which in the end, is, is, once you do it, right, it's quite fun. And you look back and you overcame. So that leads into a good value that we have that you would learn through programming, through learning open source software, and it's determination. When you have something set in your mind that you want to accomplish, you're gonna, you're gonna try to do it. Yeah? And you, you'll stay up tons of time. I think, I think developers really uh, have a difficult time with sleep. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Collaboration. Now, uh, I often say that, I, that if governments and politicians were a lot more like open source, the world would be a better place, right? Because we're collaborating, we're talking. You know, we, 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 we may not always agree with one another on certain topics, but we always find a solution together because we have to, right? We understand that we realize we are in this together. And of course, the last thing that you'd see in that picture is thinking. And like I said, if you can think it, you can create it. And that tends to um, continue in adulthood learning. Right? I, uh, 
I didn't know much about Linux three years ago. I, I really didn't. I, I, I started out with a computer in, I guess it was 1982, uh, with, with uh, Commodore 64. And all I saw was a, a black screen with a, with a green dot. And I didn't know what that dot was, and I didn't know what to do with it, right? And I've made my way through the, I guess, 30 years of my life, roughly, uh, you know, using computers, but not really understanding them. And now, uh, I work with, with people that are very patient. Thank you, Max. <laughs> um, they're very patient with me, and I ask a lot of questions to learn about computers, and I realize it's a lot of fun. And, and I'm learning to think differently. So Steve Jobs said this, and um, you know, I, I, this is, I think this is more meant for the US, right? And that's really what it is. This, this one's more meant for America, because this, this, is, this is what's taking place around the world. America's sort of lagging in this, in this area of um, learning open source software. As American, I, I could really say I wish my country was where your country is at right now with learning computer science. Because we, we are really lacking in this. And there, there are tons of reasons. You know, there's, there's, there's political ones, there's, there's funding, there, there's many issues. Um, but I think what you're doing here, you're going to see that it's going to improve things five, ten, 20 years down the road, you're going to see an entirely different environment here. The, the things that you will see now, I mean, some of you are probably in your 20s, by the time you're my age, you'll be amazed at the change that will take place. And it's all due to education and learning coding. So this, this is something that I kind of came up with um, after doing some deep thought about uh, open source software in, in, in schools. I, I've gone to the school board in, um, in uh, the U.S. and you know it was a bit frustrating. I had said that you wouldn't imagine how hard it is to sell something that's for free, right? And and that's just in the U.S. Um, but it made me realize one thing, and that is this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for people who might grow up in a um, less than ideal situation, but they can em be empowered, they can prosper through learning software, through learning how to code and develop. So, contributing, this is, uh, this is something I would, I would hope and speaks to each and every one of you in this room. You know, pick a project and, and learn it and, and try try to help. You can do this through pack, packaging. You can try to build something. Um, you'll notice recently there's, sorry, there, this little logo here is a flat pack. So that's, that's a new packaging system that's coming out kind of. And, and so you could experiment with that. With the open build service, we actually got that to run recently. And these other things are Ubuntu snaps uh, right here, and it's a very similar idea. You can help maintain infrastructure. We need people um, in OpenSUSE that can, in the community, that can really kind of help with the infrastructure. And, and so I, I would ask you, if you want to do that, just, just get involved with the email list and, and, and take part, you know? The community is there to help, and they would appreciate you helping them. So help us to help each other. Make a new project. I mean, each one of you are here. You're probably going to have to do some sort of thesis, I would assume. Um, so, you know, whatever you do, whatever ideas you have, you have tons of free uh, tools 
to really do what you want. Contribute to an existing product, uh, project. Um, oops, go back. So, translations, we just incorporated this uh, weblet uh, into our translation team, and it's very easy to contribute. Very, very easy to contribute with that. I mean, you just go, and it's written in, they're written in English, and then everyone kind of translates from there, but you can literally do it in, in five minutes, and, and you're out, and you've just helped your entire community from Indonesia, right? It's that simple. Um, so some of you, I'm sure, are learning about <laughs> Docker. Um, and in that aspect, I'd like to, for you to take a look at Portis. It's another one of our projects. And then those of you who are sysadmins are going down that path. We have another um, project called the Machinery Project. And that allows you to see what's on your systems, what's on your computers. Yeah? OK, marketing. <laughs> We'd like to help you help help us to market, right? Um, so what does it involve? Well, it involves writing, writing, writing. Yeah. And you don't have to you don't have to dress like this like this guy here. Yeah. So uh, this is Dominic. He actually does our tumbleweed um, releases, and so I'm sure Max, you'll you'll joke with him a bit about that, <laughs> that photo. Yeah, but. It does involve writing, and, and, and that would be blogging, that would be social media, that just be, you know, get out there, make a presence. You can help with the wiki pages, you can help with documentation, translation. Uh, there are so many ways to help with the marketing of OpenSUSE, or any project that you have. Any project that you, I mean, some of you might be more accustomed to GNOME, or Fedora, or um, Ubuntu, KDE, uh, Wireshark, or, I mean, you, you could basically pick any project you want. I, I'm just encouraging you to go out and participate in that and help. You can run a booth. Yeah? Um, and if you do run a booth, just contact me and I can help to get you some things uh, here. So I can help to ship things. There are certain restrictions, so there are some difficult things like CDs. I can't, I can't really ship you any CD or DVDs. Sorry. <clears throat> and then, like I said, I can send you marketing, marketing material. So when you're at these conferences, just talk to people. Okay. So. I think that's going to conclude my talk. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. We have a great program, and uh, I look forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the throughout the rest of the summit. And if you have any questions, please come up to me, so I can take some questions um, if you would like. Does anyone have any questions? No. No. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy this enjoy the summer.